Hi guys, it's Kelly and I am back again with another video. I actually made this card probably like two weeks ago, so I'm just getting around to the video. This is for Trinity Stamps and they did a blog hop and this is their birthday release and it's totally adorable and I love just about everything in it and you're going to see how many products I used. So I used Sweet Surprise, the candy jar, Sweeter Than, Sweet Sentimini, the layered confetti dies, all of this stuff will be linked below and all of this stuff will be linked on the blog post. Um, so forgive me if I missed one of the things that I used because I used a lot and like I said it was quite some time ago. So first things first, I'm making a different size card. I'm channeling my inner Christina Warner and I'm making a 5x7 card. Why am I making a 5x7 card? Not because I want to, no. I do, I chose to make a 5x7 card because um, the candy jar fits an entire A2 size card and I wanted to make it a shaker. So I cut my first piece of cardstock at um, five by seven. This one I cut five by eight, and then I gave myself an inch lip there, which I used my Teflon bold folder to um, just do. Why can't I think of the words? See, it's been so long since I've done this. I can't even think of words for crafting. Um, but anyway, so I did. I did the thing with the bone folder. So created the little ridge. Um, and then folded that over so that way I can glue my card front to that lip and it will still open like a regular card. Here, you're looking at a whole bunch of images that are nothing but masks. So many masks. Because I wanted to do my a traditional one layer card because when I saw the products for the first time, I was like, for sure, 110%, this is what I'm doing. But then I wanted to do the shaker because of all the little... Um, candy sprinkles pieces parts that she sent me and they were all rainbow and I love them so much and I wanted to include them and so I still wanted to do the scene but I wanted it to be a shaker and this particular set the candy jar set the dies that match make it so easy because it already has a section that just cuts out the middle so I didn't even have to be terrified about die cutting through my card um, because I had something that would cut it out perfectly so that was amazing so here, you've seen me do this before if you've watched any of my videos. I use my masks, I put all of them in the places that I want, then I line up the stamps on top of that, and then go through, remove the other masks, and stamp them down. One layer cards, you stamp what you want to see all of first. So if you want to see all of a sucker or all of a candy, you stamp that first, then mask it. Then stamp the next layer of what's going to be behind it. I am using uh, Gina K Amalgam Ink here because I am going to be doing the entire thing with Copic coloring. Um, except, wait, did I do the background with Distress Ink? I might have. I might have done the blue. I'm not sure because there's just been so many cards in between this one and this the video um, that, yeah, that I, I just, I, I knew it was going to be a longer video. You obviously can see from the time here that we're going to be together for a hot minute and there will surely be story time. Um, but that it, like, I just knew it was going to be a long video and I had to wait until I had time to do it. Um, we talked yesterday, uh, which I don't know when I'm going to put this up, either Friday or Saturday. Not really. I'm not married to it. I'm not sure yet. Um, but I did have a video that went up actually today um, and in that I talked to you about a little bit how I've been, you know, working out more and doing more meal prep and things like that. And um, so just having 35 minutes to sit down and do the voiceover has been a little bit of a struggle. Uh, and here today I'm doing it pretty much because <laughs> I'm doing it today even though I got three hours of sleep last night. I worked my first job until four and then worked my second job from five until 9.30. Um, I'm doing it tonight because I want to be able to go to the lake this weekend with Eric. Um, so in order to do that I have to have something already in the queue to go up that this weekend and this, this video ha needed to get done. Um, so I have, this is the second time now that I've ever worked with, um, Trinity's products. They're always super adorable. Uh, and Tanisha is wonderful. She's lovely to work with. Oh, see, I did do distress inks. Um, so here I just use, um, the 3M masking tape because it's super easy to get like a, a clean edge and I don't have to worry about cutting it, but you could use any masking paper that you have on hand. I would just cut it with a straight edge. And then so I'm doing the um, Distress Ink 
Oh, see, now clearly I don't know what I'm talking about because I wondered if I, I just said I did the whole thing with Copex and that's a lie. Total lie. I just lied to you. Y'all, I mean, we're in a relationship where I am lying to you. So my apologies. Um, because this stencil is totally the cat's behind. This stencil is so cool. So there's two stencils that come on the side. There's ribbon on one side and confetti on the other. And it, it's two, like I said, two stencils, but they aren't the same because one of them, this is the first layer, does the one side of the ribbon and then you line it up with the other side of the ribbon. You can see it's super easy to line up because you can see your, you know, distress inking or whatever ink you choose to ink blend with behind it. And then you line it up and you do it in a different color and it gives it all this dimension. It's like stencil dimension. It's amazing. I had like a ton of fun with this. So I did Salty Ocean and then for the darker side I did Blueprint Sketch. And you'll um, see how that looks as soon as I'm done. You know, I'll move it and you'll be able to see it. But I did a bunch of different colors because rainbows. And if I have to explain to you any more than that, then we can't be friends. I just, I, I don't know how to explain. I, I, I just don't. I don't know how to explain to you why rainbows are so awesome because they're amazing. And I love all the rainbows. So here, um, you know, just going through moving that stencil around in different areas, I do still have my candy jar and my cupcake mast so that the ribbons will be behind them. But this is like this stencil on its own with like a happy birthday sentiment. Um, you could totally make a card. Absolutely. Like 110%. You wouldn't need anything else other than that. It would be super easy to mail. So here I did the, I think it was mustard seed. Again, everything's linked. Don't quote me. Um, so, and then the um, carved pumpkin. So I did a couple of different color combinations. I didn't go with a red. I decided to go with the pink um, because I prefer pink. That's just the reality of it. I'm not really a red fan. My son's favorite color is red uh, and Eric's favorite color is red. Uh, my sister's favorite color is red. I, I'm just not. I'm just not sold on it. Red for my nail polish? Sure. That's it's perfectly acceptable. Red on me does not look great. And you would think because like blonde hair, blue eyes. Oh, here I, I got all excited um, doing the pink. And I was talking to Eric that I forgot I needed to do the orange. So that one is like a pretty coral color. Whatever. It's fine. I'm sure nobody's going to notice. Well, they wouldn't have unless I pointed it out, which I already did. So yeah, here we are. Anywho, um, just not a huge fan of red. It's just not my cup of tea. So if I can replace the red in a rainbow with some pink, then I'm totally down to do that. Because I love pink. I know like some people are like, oh, pink's such a girly color. Uh, here I sped it up so we don't have to sit here for eons, you know, until your toddlers are in college. Um, not that I wouldn't love hanging out with you. I would, but like we all have lives to live. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, so I want to go back to the lake and there's no, um, there's no internet up there. Like I, so I have to have everything in place before I go to do that. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's nice. It's, you know, it, Eric grew up there and he likes to go up and, you know, do the jet ski, um, which I'm not a huge jet ski person, but that's cool. Like I'm happy to just sit in the water or just, you know, whatever. I just want to be where he is. I'm sure that, you know, you can probably understand that. Anywho, so did that. And then once we, you know, we're going to get into the Copa coloring once this part is over, I did do the confetti as well. Um, this is kind of a busier card for me, but because it's a scene, I'm like, okay with it. You know what I mean? Um, so I just picked random areas to go in and I didn't even ink up my blenders. I just used whatever was left over on it. So now I'm going to go in and remove those masks um, and so you'll see that line of delineation where like my countertop is going to start. I'm just going to remove all of these. Since I have dark nail polish on, um, I didn't want to try to pick it up with my fingernails. So I used my scissors to do that. I'm going to give myself a black line for where my countertop is going to end. You know, if you watch my videos that my, my black line is my little safety net and that makes me happy and feel safe and, and comfy. It's like a little warm fuzzy blanket for me. So I, that's why I put it in there. That's, it's not necessary, but that's just how I roll. I'm going to do the countertop gray because I'm going to have a lot of colors going on in here. And this is just, you know, a nice neutral. So basically I'm just going to fill in the whole countertop. I'm going to add shading. 
um, underneath all of my little items and make the countertop darker further back, lighter up front. So using that darker color will push it into the background. We'll give it a, the look of it receding even though it's a complete one layer card. Okay, so what else have I had going on? Oh, I know what I wanna to talk to you guys about, mystery boxes. And I keep meaning to bring this up in videos and I keep forgetting about it because I get off on my tangents about story time and the things that are happening in my life and I keep forgetting to bring it up. So let's talk mystery boxes. I, this is not of my own doing, okay? I cannot take credit for this. Um, I have never, and I mean never, purged my stamps. I have never. I've never gotten rid of a stamp set. I've not, I mean, I've given them a way to friends if they were like, hey, I really love that one. And I'm like, Psh, I don't even use it. Like here, take it, give it some ink, make it happy, bring it joy, um, because I cannot. So I've never given away any of my stamps. I still have Hero Arts stamp sets from, you know, back when I first started stamping, which would have been around 2010, 2009, 2010. So I do have some older ones. I also have a lot of newer ones um, that I'm purging. And this is wholly Eric's response ability. Like he, he's the one who is completely responsible for it. Um, he knew I didn't have time to organize my craft room and he's pretty much the bomb.com. So he started doing it for me because he's like, hey, if I can, you know, talk to you while you do a card and actually accomplish something that would be, you know, helpful. I'm totally down to do that. And so he started um, organizing it for me. And I have a really hard time asking for help. It's one, like I saw, who put it up? I think, was it an Alan Hudson question? They always have such great questions on Facebook, but I don't remember who it was. It was some crafty group. And it said, what is harder for me to say? I love you. I need help. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I was sorry. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire? Worcestershire. Now I don't know if I can say that word. Do you see the conundrum I've gotten myself in? Or I need help. And it was funny because like it's supposed to be a joke, you know, because who, Worcestershire, Worcestershire? Worcestershire, Worcestershire. I'm going to have to Google it now for pronunciation purposes. But anyway, um, for me, like I looked at that list and right out the gate, I knew for me the hardest one to say is, is I need help. And um, that's something that I kind of struggle with and it's hard for me to accept help from other people. And it's like, if I'm, if I'm responsible for it, then like, I don't expect anybody else to do it. I expect that it'll be my thing to do. And I totally get that from my mom. My mother never asked for help. Um, she just does the things. And even like when she's exhausted, even when she's walking around like a zombie, uh, and I haven't been there. So, um, like she just, it doesn't, I don't, I don't know how it is for her, but I know for me, it does not even occur to me to be like, hey, I need help. And that's a problem that I have because it's not incumbent upon somebody else to offer the help because if I'm just going through and doing all of the things, there's no reason for them to believe that I'm struggling with it, even though I am. Um, so anywho, so he was like, please let me do this for you. I know you don't have time. I know it's something that you want done. He's totally amazing. And so he started organizing it. And in organizing it, there was clearly um, far too many. I know this is blas This is crafting blasphemy I'm about to commit here. There was far too many stamps in my craft room that were just not getting used either because I didn't have time to use them or because I purchased them and my style changed or just whatever. So I do have some older ones and I have some newer ones. I don't want to just get rid of them. Um, and I'm down to donate them if I could find a place to donate them to, but a lot of the places won't, they aren't interested in them. A lot of places in my area I'm, are not interested in them and it's too much to ship somewhere. So what I want to do is mystery boxes. This is what I want to do. So basically the whole idea of it would be um, like $25 worth of, or I'm sorry, $50 worth of product for 25 bucks. Um, $75 worth of product for 35 bucks. $100 worth of product for 50 bucks. Like that would be the way that I do it. So you were getting more, and some of them are new and never been used, and some of them have been well loved. So it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna be the luck of the draw. If I have a stamp and a die for something, if I have both, I will try. Um, like vigilantly, I will try to make sure they get paired together because I do have a lot of stamp and die sets. Um, 
but so that way you know you're not I, I will definitely not just send you a random die by itself unless it's a standalone die if it belongs to a set um you'll get the whole thing or you'll get none of it that's that's just I because who what are you going to do with just random like animal dies do you know what I mean I'm not no if they're standalone dies like if it's a cute panda like then yeah sure but if they match a set um I'm not going to send you one without the other so please tell me if this is something that you're interested in in me doing. Um, I'm not sure the best way to go about it. I know Christina Warner has done it, um, like with the mystery boxes quite a bit. And I think the first time she did it, she did it like with the first X amount of people to comment. And then they went so quickly. Um, the next time she did it, she, I think, pulled random commenters because she felt like it wasn't fair to people who maybe didn't see the post right away. And I can totally get that. Um, so what I will probably do is I will put it up on my blog. I will put it in the community section on YouTube. I will put it up on Instagram to let you know the date and the time that I'm going to put them up. And then I'll just have people comment like $25 slot, $50 slot, whatever. Um, and then from there once they're out they're out like I'll pre-count them to see how many I have right now I have no idea because they're not put together because if this isn't something that you guys think you're interested in then I'm not going to do it um I'll figure out another way whether that's like a de-stash page and people could just you know come in peruse what I got and move on with their life or um you know a Facebook group or something like that so please let me know if that's something that you're interested in doing um and also if you would be interested in um getting a card in that box um because I'm I, I you know I don't really mail my cards I hoard a bunch of them I have a bunch of them that are hoarded if a card of mine is something that you would be interested in having and not just like a general you know like whatever like at the store like just thank you stamped on like a blank piece of paper like one that I've actually made um if you're you know if you're like yeah I really love to have that um, or it doesn't matter to me, like, I totally get that. Um, I'm not, I'm sure, like, there's not going to be a slew of people who want them. But if you think that you would want those, then um, let me know about that, too, please, in the comments. I would appreciate it. So then that way, going forward, I can figure out what to do with this just overflow, I'm not even kidding you guys, overflowing box of stamps and dies and stencils and just, th <laughs> just things that have to go. But anyway, um... So here you saw I colored the candy jar. I colored it as if it was clear glass. And you'll see in the center section, I didn't color it. And the reason that I didn't is because there's no point. I'm cutting it out. So I'm not even going to waste the ink for my um, cupcake here. Because my counter was in cool grays, I opted to do my frosting in warm grays. And I'm just adding in where the shadows are going to be to give it some dimension. This is the coloring I did on this is more of a central highlight, meaning there'd be shading on the left and the right hand side. But when I do the candy, for the most part, I kept the shading to the left because that's like my normal go-to. I'm going to use a little bit of colorless blender on my white areas just to kind of blend that in a little bit more. Um, and then I'm going to move on to the rest of the cupcake, which I decided to do pink because like I told you, I love it. Um, so what has been going on? Oh, I know what I didn't talk to you guys about. I did post it on my Instagram. Um, so I was in a car accident. I was in a car accident about two, two-ish weeks ago. It was right before we went to the cottage the first time. Um, and pretty much what happened was, you guys know I love my Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts is turning on me. I think I told you this. Like the coffees, the, the calories in my coffee are the biggest contributor to my weight gain. Um, because I went from drinking like one a day and nursing that all shift to working multiple jobs and getting two to three coffees a day, which is like three, six, it's like a thousand calories for the, what I was drinking, um, which is about, you know, it's just under what I'm allotted for my entire day. I'm drinking it in, you know, in coffee and then still having to eat real food. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I was going... We had a training. I was going to go um, pick up 
No, what was I doing? I was locking the theater. That's what it was. We had training, and so I, I was going to go lock up the theater because they were done in there for the day, and I decided to stop and get coffee on my way to the theater. So I'm in my uniform. I go, I'm into the drive through um, There's me and a couple other cars. There's that SUV in front of me, and um, I'm just sitting there chilling, scoot up, you know, next person goes, scoot up. Um, and so the person in front of me, the SUV, um, went to go like she was going and then like all of a sudden she put her car in reverse and backed up well when she backed up she hit me um and so my immediate response is obviously like are you okay so I get out of the car I'm like are you okay and she was like yeah are you and I said yeah I'm fine and she said is there any damage and I said I don't know because our cars are still touching so like do you want to pull up around the front of the building in a parking spot um, so we're not blocking their drive through because clearly like the rest of the people who are behind me, this has nothing to do with them. The girl at the window was really sweet. She's like, I'm so sorry. I'm, I can't believe that just happened to you. And obviously I know her because I go to Duncan all the time. And, um, so I'm like, no, no, it's no big deal. Like, I'm just going to go up and talk to her. So sh the lady pulls up, um, like into the parking lot, but not into a parking spot. And she doesn't pull up far enough for me to get out of the drive through And so pull up she gets out of her car and she was like I'm so sorry I didn't even see you there you know she's like I didn't even need my change uh which is apparently she that's what happened she forgot her change and then she backed up to get her change from the window and didn't see my car and um she's like I don't even know what to do here and I was like oh well this is it's super simple I said there is damage now that we're not still connected I can see it um she just like I think it was her hitch um like crushed my license plate and like the Part, part of my grill um but thankfully no like serious body damage or anything like that and I told her I said so it's a private property accident like we're just going to go down the street to the police station and then file a report there and she was like no I'm I'm not going to the police station I'm going to work and I was like no no you are, I clearly have misunderstood what I've said because either we're going to go down the street to the police station and file a report there or I'm going to call the police and they're going to come here but either way, a police report is going to be filed. Like, that's what's happening. And um, she was like, well, I have to go to work. I can't go to the police station. Um, like, I'm, I'm not going to go. And I'm like, okay, then I'm going to call them. So she pulls into a parking spot. She's very nice. She's very apologetic. You know, she's like, I just looked in my rear view and I didn't see you. And I was like, well, did you use your side mirrors? And she was like, no. And I was like, well. So that's important. Think about that when you're backing up. Don't just use your rear view. Use your side mirrors. And like really, honestly, I'm not one of those people who's like crazy about my vehicle. Um, I know people who, you know, like there's like one like small dent or scratch or whatever. And they're like losing their mind because their car is their baby. I'm not that person. Um, as long as it gets me from point A to point B and it runs well and it's safe, I don't particularly care. I uh, used to drive my I used to drive my ex-husband crazy because he'd be like, "What's that tent from?" And I'm like, "Meh, you know, I don't really know." And I'm also not the best backer upper, self-admittedly, not the best backer upper. My driver side mirror, no, my passenger side mirror is cracked from where I hit my garage when I was married. I was backing up, I was in a rush, and my car was at a weird angle, and I pff, smacked right into the garage door. And then my other um, side mirror is cracked because I hit my own sister's car. Yes, I, you, that, you heard that correctly. I hit my own sister's car. So she came over to watch Peanut for me because I had to go to work and I was rushing to leave. And like consciously, I knew she was parked in the driveway, but I didn't really, I thought she was over far enough. And so I didn't really think anything of it. And sure enough, like I smacked my mirror into her mirror and like down the side of her car like no joke I like so I'm obvious I'm not the best backer upper so like I'm sympathetic I get it it's crap day um so I end up having to call for them to come which was awkward because I'm at I'm at work and I work at the police station and I call dispatch and I'm like hey it's Kelly like can you send someone over here um and she was like oh I have a question for you about whatever with court and I was like Louise uh, I just got front-ended I think I said rear-ended because I couldn't think of like how to call that so I was like I just I just got hit in the Dunkin Donuts drive through like can you send me an officer and she was like oh I was like I'll call you about the court thing when I get back to work um so he one of my officers came over 
and he treated it like to his credit he treated it like we were complete strangers so he ids her ids me calls in our license plates the whole deal runs you know through the whole thing and then tells her the same thing that i did which is basically it's a private property accident if nobody's injured and your cars are drivable then you know you have to go down to the police station to file a report so she says she has to go to work he says that's fine tell me what time you're going to be there um and he she's like i'll be there at five so here, this is the funny part, because private property accidents are actually handled by us at the window, like where people come into the window and we handle them. Um, so we're standing there in the parking lot and he looks at me and he was like, so like, it's been a hot minute since I've done a private property accident. Like, can you help me out with this? <laughs> Cause I obviously can't do it myself. Um, so I was like, yeah, just like you fill out the top part. I'll fill out, you know, the driver or whatever. So we did that. I did get the girl's information from Dunkin' Donuts who witnessed it. She agreed to be a witness for me, which was super, super kind of her because there are some people who just don't want to get involved. And um, so did that. And then I left because my, like I was done. So he did call me later that night to let me know that she came in to fill out her half, which I was like, awesome. But she kept telling me, I don't want to go through my insurance. I don't want to go through my insurance. I don't want to go through my insurance. I don't want to go and find through my insurance. And I'm like, I get it. Like, I understand not wanting your premiums to go up. And I said, in filing a police report does not mean you have to go through your insurance. Like, I'm down for us to, to work it out. That's fine. So she does come in and fill out her half. Um, I get her phone number. I go get an estimate. The estimate to fix my car is several hundred dollars. And so I'm like, if this is me, I'm going through insurance. So I call her and I tell her what the estimate is. And um, she was like, well, I'm going to go to the dealership and pay it. And then you can take your car in to get fixed. And I'm like, I don't, like, I don't think it works like that. Like, I don't think you can get credit towards the car. Like, I don't, I don't think that's how that works. So I called the body shop guy back at the dealership and he was like, no, just tell her to cut you a check. And I'm like, she doesn't want to cut me a check. She doesn't want to. And I said, how long are you going to have my car for? And he said, probably two to three days. So now I'm going to need a rental, right? Because, and so I'm like, for sure, I'm going, like, if this is me, if I'm the at-fault party, I'm going through insurance. She still doesn't want to do it. So then we're trying to figure out a day that we can go to the dealership together because she wants a receipt to prove that she paid for it so that later on I can't come back and say she didn't pay me, which I completely understand. So we're going back and forth and this and that. And she was like, well, I have a body guy. Would you be willing to use him? And I'm like, no, because I'm not looking for like Bondo in some dude's home garage. Like I'm not looking for that. Um, so back and forth and back and forth. And finally, like I just tell her, look, please understand that it's my prerogative whether or not I want to get my vehicle fixed. So regardless, like you still owe me the money for my car, whether like it's you're at fault so what do you want to do here so eventually we she agreed to um just give me the money have we had a document notarized that said that she paid me so she had her receipt and um then I can schedule my car to get fixed at my convenience um so the whole thing was just kind of like a pain in the butt I'm super grateful that she was honest and like followed through on her part so thank god for that but um it just got very, very tedious with the back and forth when, like, it wasn't even my fault. <laughs> um, so anyway, glad that was over. Glad that, you know, she did on her end and that we could both just move on with our lives. Now on to the shaker. So you saw I used um, Hero to acetate sheets. I just cut one, um, just a piece big enough that I needed it. These are kind of all the little candy things that she sent me. Um, so many awesome like clay pieces and things like that. They're all listed in her shop. They're super cool. And so now I'm going to do the shaker. In order to do a shaker, and if they've been around for a while, this probably is not the first tutorial you've seen on them, but just in case it is, um, you have to put your foam tape right up against each other. There cannot be any gaps in your foam tape around the area in which you're going to fill with the shaker because otherwise your shaker pieces parts will fall out. So I'm going to do two layers of foam tape to make sure that my things have enough room to move around. In hindsight, I probably should have done more than that because the jelly beans don't really move all of that great. Um, but I only put a couple of them in there and I, I, I think it's fine. Um, so once I have that on those two layers, I'm going to do two layers 
everywhere else so that everything is flush. Um, and I, you can do this with like the white, um, fun foam also, if you're, you know, if that's the kind of foam you're using or whatever else you got. I have the scotch, like the Big Mama scotch foam roll, so that's what I used. Um, and here I'm just filling them. I'm just picking little rainbow cuteness and just sprinkling them in there. There's like little mints and pinwheels and, um, like I said, the jelly beans. And then there's sprinkle, like they look like actual sprinkles. They're clay and, or little, there's little balls too. I did put a couple of the jelly beans in there. I am saving those for Easter because how sick and cute would it would be to do, um, the little, you know, the, like acrylic or clay jelly beans in an Easter basket. I, I just think it would be so stinking cute. So please remind me that I have them when it comes time to be Easter because you know how easy it is to forget that. So now that all of my um, foam tape, like the backing has been removed, I have another five by seven piece of cardstock that I am going to put on the back to contain all of my pieces. And then this will be, um, everything will be hidden in there um, and you can see it shake. Isn't it cute? Isn't it so stinking cute? Like normally I don't get that excited about my cards, but this one I just thought was totally adorable. Um, especially with a little, you know, shaker piece in the whole scene. And it's just like everything that I love. Um, so the other thing that I did with the sprinkles, they have like multicolor sprinkles. I wanted to put them on my cupcake, but I didn't want to be able to see all the glue. So I am using, oh, I'm going to forget it now. The Ranger multimedia matte it's matte glue people that's what I'm using so I found that it was easiest for me to like squeeze a little bit out and kind of like smush it with my finger and then press the sprinkles into the glue and then once it dried um like you couldn't really see it at all and the sprinkles held really well so I would totally do that again now for the sentiment I did struggle a little bit with placement because I was so excited about the scene and the shaker that I didn't really think about where I was going to put my sentiment. Um, so yeah, that was my own fault. And I do that a lot of times with sentiments. I'm going to be honest. I just do. Um, so here I have some black cardstock. I'm going to do some heat embossing. And then you can see in the top right, I've already die cut um, the sweet part of it. And I, it has like the... Um, like the outline. So I did that in white and then I did the letters in black. And then for the heat embossing, I'm doing white letters on black and I, I'm going to trim all of these out. So it says, um, have a sweet birthday. I think is what it says. Hope you have a sweet birthday. Have a sweet birthday. It's been a long day and it's been a long time since I made this card. So originally I was going to put the sentiment down at the bottom um, because that's just my natural inclination is to keep the design super tight, but it just covered up far too much of the, um, candy that I had already colored. So I moved it to the top right, which I don't love, but I don't think looks bad, but I already had glue on it. Um, when I put it down on the bottom. And so I do have a little bit of glue there. I recently purchased a Xyron adhesive remover. Um, I've seen Christina use it several times. I'm excited to try that, but if you don't have that, a good old fashioned white eraser will work. It does take a little bit of time, but it doesn't damage your card. You know, just go slow. Um, don't use your finger because then you just rub dirt all over it and make it not sticky and then you can't get it up. I added some shimmer to the ribbons. Be careful with that because they are distress ink and they do react with water and then all over my candy and stuff like that. And that's it. That's the whole card. Um, so I hope you learned something. I hope you really like it. I'm totally in love with it. Uh, and that's it. So I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.